What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 36 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about battle backgrounds and how to change them. There are three ways that I'm going to be talking about in the episode, and they each have their own pros and cons. The first way is changing the battle background based on the map you're on. The second way is changing the battle background for each trainer you fight. And the third way is uh, going into the scripts and changing the battle background depending on what type of terrain you're standing on. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to briefly touch upon a fix for the Mega Evolution script if your Pokémon are staying Mega Evolved after the battle. With that said, let's get into it. So, the first way, and the easiest way, is to edit the metadata of your map, so that way the entire map ha all has the same battle background. Um, and let's go into our folder and take a look at some of the battle backgrounds we can set it to. So in our game, go to Graphics, and then Battle Backs. So I have different battle backs downloaded depending on if you're using Elite Battle System or not. Um, the type of battle back, like resolution and size that you use will be different. So some of them that are a little smaller are the ones that don't use Elite Battle System. These are the ones that just came with Essentials. Stuff like Battle BG Champion, Battle BG Cave Dark. I think Cave was overwritten, but yeah, like this is an Elite Battle System one. Field is Elite Battle System, but Forest, Eve, Forest, Night, those are not Elite Battle System. So, what you need to do is take a look at some of the names. Like, for example, this one here just says Champion. Oh, yeah, I just opened it. Okay. So, this is Battle BG Champion. So, that is the first thing that makes up a battle background, is the actual background image itself. There are two other files that you need to look at when making a battle background, and those are the bases. These are important also, and they're also in the same folder. So there's stuff like enemy base cave, enemy base champion, and then there's player bases. So enemy base is the base that the enemy Pokemon stands underneath, and then player base is the one that your Pokemon stands underneath. So stuff like player base champion, player base city, player base field grass. What, ma what matters the most is the name after, so something like cave or champion. Those names are very important when it comes to setting the battle back for your map. So let's go and show the first way to set the battle back. What I like to do is just go into the game to set it because it's really easy. So right now, this map doesn't have any specific battle back set to it. But if you press F9 and uh, go up or go down and then up a little bit, we can go to set metadata for our map. Select root four. That's our map. We can go down in here and hit enter to set the battle back. And then we can type in a name that we want. So we don't type stuff like battle BG or enemy base. We just type that name at the end that I mentioned. So for example, if we want to use battle BG champion and enemy base champion, all we need to do is type in champion. There we go. So now that that's been entered, all battles on this map will use the champion background and have the champion bases. See, there it is. So it looks kind of bad, especially because there's still a sandstorm going on. But um, yeah, and there's the player base champion. The reason why it looks cut off is because I'm using Elite Battle System, and the champion battle bases were not made for Elite Battle System. Like, I, I, I can show you that right now. So the player bases, they'll be basically a semicircle cut in half if, you, if you're not using Elite Battle System. Like, this, this looks totally fine if you're not using it because Elite Battle System zooms out more. But if you are using Elite Battle System, you need to make sure that your player bases look something like this, where it's like a complete circle that your Pokemon can stand on. So that is actually the first and easiest way to set the background. And if you want to get really creative, you can make your own and then, um, like, give it its own name. So, for example, I could make my own field, like a new field, and call it Field 2. And then in the map, in the metadata, I could type in field 2, and then it would use that background. And it would use the player bases too, if I had player bases named, like player base field 2. So now I'm going to show you another way, which is actually pretty easy. And it's pretty cool if you want to make it specific for each trainer. What you can do, I copied this trainer from root 3 of the uh, base maps. But there's a script command right here that you can call right above the battle. So this, this conditional branch is all of the battle logic. But right here, right above it, you can call the script command Pokemon Global dot next battle back equals and then the name that you want. So in this case, when you talk to her, it sets the battle back to champion. And you have to make sure you have the quotes here, but 
that's something that you can do also if you want to change the battle back. So that's pretty cool. But what I want to do is make it so that way the battle back is dependent on the terrain you're standing on. I think that makes the most sense. Because if, if we use our current method that's going on in the map right now, the grass and the sand will both have the same battle back, which I don't know. I don't, I don't think I like that. So let's go into our game and um, clear out that battle back section. And then let's go into our scripts and scope it out. It's actually pretty easy since um, in the last tutorial we uh, made our own desert terrain. So since we've already made the terrain, a lot of the work's already been done. So that's pretty cool. So let me just go into the metadata real quick. Let me go to route four and clear this out and then hit enter. Cool. So now it'll, it'll just use the default battle backs now when we go into a battle. And let's see how that looks. So right now, since we haven't set a battle back for this map, it's using the default stuff. So even though we're in sand, it looks like we're fighting in grass, which we don't want. We're going to use some scripts to make it so that way our battle takes place in the sand when we're on the sand. So let's go and check that out. So the first thing you need to do is scroll down a bit and go to the PB environment script. What you need to do is add a new environment because these are necessary for determining what the battle background is. So underneath space, let's add our new desert environment. Make sure I'm spelling that all right. And that will be number 15. Oh. There we go. So now we have 15 environments, with the last one being desert, one we just made. So the next thing we need to do is, let's see, I think it was pfield underscore field. Yeah, here it is. So go to the pfield underscore field script, and you're going to want to scroll down a bit around line 818, 820, all that stuff. So what this does is it returns an environment dependent on the terrain you're standing on. So it would only make sense that if we are standing on desert terrain, then our current environment should be considered desert. So let's just copy the sand line here. Just copy that. Oh no, what did I press? When you get a new keyboard, sometimes you press the wrong buttons. <laughs> All right. So replace desert and this other one here, desert, as I type desert. There we go. So if you are standing on desert terrain, which we made in the last episode, then your current environment is desert. So now most of the work's already been done. I mean, for in terms of scripting, we just need to do one more thing and it's very easy. So if you're using elite battle system versus if you're not using elite battle system, there there is a difference here. Since I am using Elite Battle System, I'll show you that first, and then I'll show you what you do if you're not using Elite Battle System. But you basically do the same script change, just in different places. But um, you're going to want to go to Elite Battle underscore Scene, doop, right here. And then it's you just scroll down a little bit from the top, and then there's this line of, there's this chunk right here, where it chooses a backdrop depending on if your current environment. So if your environment is cave, your backdrop equals cave. If your environment is water, like moving water or still water, then it returns water. If your environment is underwater, then the backdrop is underwater. I think you can see where this is going. But we want to make our own, so we can just copy this. Right on. So if the environment is desert, the backdrop will be desert. So this value that you just typed in right here, desert, can be anything you want, but I think it'll be easiest to remember if we set it to desert. So what this does is it pulls files with that name. So what you're going to need now is a battle BG desert, a player based desert, and an enemy based desert. And then if you s encounter a wild Pokemon on that, it will use those files instead of the default files because your current environment is desert because you're standing on a desert tile. So, if you're not using Elite Battle System, you, ha you basically make this exact same code change, but you make it in another script. I think it was, it's PokeBattle underscore scene. So I just have to find it. I mean, another thing that you can do also is just Control Shift F battle back, but I found it. Okay, yeah. PokeBattle underscore scene. And look, this code, this chunk of code right here is basically the exact same. And we can paste in our changes that we did 
but we're just making them somewhere else. So yeah, if you are not using Elite Battle System, this is where you make that change. If you are using Elite Battle System down here, this is where you make that change. Right on. And um, basically this Elite Battle System overwrites the other one. So if you are using Elite Battle System, it's fine if you do them in both, but this is where, this is where it actually matters. So right on. Now our code change is basically done. I mean, it is done. So the next thing we need to do is go to our Battle Backs folder and make our own Battle BG Desert, player based desert and enemy based desert. So what I've done is I've actually copied Battle BG Mountain, copied it and pasted it, and then just renamed the copy. I renamed that to Battle BG Desert. And I actually did that for the player and enemy bases as well. So instead of enemy base city sand, I copied that, pasted that. So now we have enemy base desert. And I think here it is, yeah. Player base desert. So now we have all of our three files for the art. So now if we go in and encounter an enemy on a sand tile, it'll use the desert environment uh, battle background. And if we go and encounter an enemy in the grass, it'll use a grass. So this way, the battle background can be kind of like natural and fluid and change depending where you're standing. So that's pretty dope. Let's let's show it off. Fight me! There we go. Ta-da, it's working perfectly. It's using the background that I specified for desert, and it's using the player base and enemy base that we specified for desert as well. So that's great, but that's only the first part. Now I need to show off that when you're not on a desert tile, it uses normal grass. Which is pretty cool, I'd have to say. And there it is. So it's all working as intended. Ain't that great? That's pretty cool, I think. So yeah, if you want to make your own custom battle backgrounds, then really all you need to do is make three files. A battle background, an enemy base, and a player base. And then make sure they have the right names. So for example, if you want to make your own crazy one that's custom, you could make enemy base custom, player base custom, and battle BG custom. And then if you want to make it so that it applies to the entire map, then you could just type custom in the metadata uh, battle BG field. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's all you need to know about setting back battle backgrounds, I would hope. I think that should cover everything. I hope this video helped and uh, it's about to help a little bit more. So if you have a, a bug with your mega evolutions where they stay mega after the battle, what you should do is go to your mega evolution script and all you have to do is one change and it'll fix it. This code right here, the function make unmega, before, it, I think before it wasn't running properly. I don't know exactly what was going on. I don't know why it was happening, but I found that this change fixes it. What you do instead is say, if it has a mega form, set its form to zero at the end of the battle. I can't think of a case where this would cause a bug. The only reason, the only a way that this wouldn't work, it would be if there are Pokemon that can Mega Evolve and also have separate forms. Like for example, if an Alola Pokemon could Mega Evolve, then they would not only return to their normal form, they would also re not be Alolan at the end of the battle, which would be bad. But right now I think this should work for everything. So try this out if you're running into that issue. So yeah, um, just this whole function right here. It's been on the screen for a while. I'll like enlarge it so you can see it better. But yeah, hopefully this video helped you out. Hopefully everything you need to know about battle backs has been uh, made clearer <laughs> and I'm sorry if I wasn't clear but I think this sh this should help but yeah with that said that is the end of the video thank you for watching um, please subscribe on YouTube you know follow on Twitter and Twitch and uh, join the Thundaga discord and yeah I'll see you guys next time goodbye and good luck making your Pokemon games I'll see you then